Hey guys, what's going on? It's The Chinist. Today is June 28th, Wednesday, new comic book day. Back in town, I went to Puerto Rico for about a week. Man, great time. Thank you for all the comments about safe travels and things of that regard. So thanks, guys. So I have my haul here of 20 with 18 different titles. So kicking it off, we have Batman and Elmer Fudd. So I accidentally picked up uh, two cover A's. I'm going to pick up a cover A, cover B. Doesn't matter, I really like cover A more anyways. So I have one for my collection and one for my speculation box that I'm going to read through. So in regard to Looney Tunes, you know, I really enjoyed the, uh, the very first one with uh, Martian Manhunter and uh, Marvin the Martian. And... Uh, you know, I didn't really enjoy the other two that I read after that, which was uh, Wally Coyote and uh, the uh, Bugs Bunny. Uh, those two I didn't really enjoy too much. <clears throat> so I think this one's going to follow suit to where, you know, it's really two independent storylines. The first uh, uh, story story uh, of this one shot is going to be more in the DC realm. And then I'm sure the, yep, so you have a secondary story here more in the Looney Tunes, uh, you know, artwork and realm. So, yeah, I'm ho uh, hoping that this one's going to be uh, pretty good, especially since it's written by Tom King. So, really surprised at that, to tell you the truth, but, uh, yeah, looking forward to that one. Okay, so next up, Secret Weapon. So, I picked up a cover A and a cover B of this one. So, this is all about the Harbinger side again in the Valiant world. And, you know, I've gone back, I've read, you know, every, uh, going back all the way to the first volume of Harbinger, I've read everything Harbinger related now at this point in time through trade and uh, other monthly ongoing series that are uh, current now at this point in time. So, yeah, love the Valiant uh, Harbinger uh, side of things. You know, it's the Psyots who are basically like mutants of the Marvel uh, world. And, uh, you know, so this is like the next genetic step for, for mankind. We're kind of far away from it, so, you, so they're using technology to kind of unlock that last genetic step. And it's not very successful. I think you only have, you know, it depends whose technology they're using, but, you know, only maybe like a 25% or lower chance of actually getting through to unlock your power or else you die. So, you know, it's a huge risk uh, to unlock these powers. But uh, anyways, Harada, who was the main, uh, let's say the Magneto, the evil guy of this world, he created, he unlocked quite a bit of Psyots. And um, the ones that had powers that, you know, they could use for fighting, he took them into his army, but he apparently hid all these other Psyots like all over the place. It didn't have, you know, they had powers, but not really weaponized powers, not powers for fighting, you know, to, to take control of the world. So you have Livewire, who used to be one of the one of the uh, henchmen for Harada. She kind of like learned, you know, the bad ways and uh, she saw the light. So she went over to the Harbinger side and now she's kind of hunting down all these Psyots who, you know, are kind of just living out there, just kind of on their own and, uh, you know, looking for help. So yeah, kind of like the Morlocks in a way. So yeah, Secret Weapons, looking forward to the storyline. Next up, The Flash. So The Flash has now become one of my most favorite uh, superheroes at this point in time. Growing up, I didn't really like many speedsters at all, to tell you the truth. But uh, yeah, really into The Flash. I think it was you know really Justice League uh, cartoon show that led into the, uh, the live action show right now that's going on. And uh, yeah, so Rebirth was all, you know, really all over the storyline. Uh, even the Jeff Johns, I went back to read uh, read those Flash. I mean, that was great. So anyways, this is a brand new story arc. Uh, you know, it's not really a spoiler because he was on the cover, but uh, the Reverse Flash is back, and uh, you kind of see, you know, what they're going to be going through. This is a brand new story arc. I believe right after this story arc, they're going to get back into the button. I think it's what I heard. So yeah, looking forward to this uh, to this new arc here. Okay, next up, JLA. So I've been kind of on the fence. I went back and forth of, you know, I was I was pretty into this uh, this title when it first came out and it got a little bit stale for me and uh, I got back into it again. So yeah, this, uh, this one here, I think they went to like a savage land, you know, type of place and uh, you have this guy and I think when he came into this world, I think he has like superhuman human powers. I forgot like what his powers were, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm really getting more interested in uh, the characters here that I was never really in tune with. You know, not even Lobo. I've never really been a Lobo fan, but uh, man, this JLA is really growing on me. So yeah, Justice League of America. 
Okay, Teen Titans. Love Teen Titans. You know, at this point in time, I think I like Teen Titans more than Champions. And at the beginning, I like Champions more. Champions, man, they took just too much of a, like a social, you know, social media route. You know, I just didn't really enjoy that too much. Teen Titans, it seemed like they started more childish. They, you know, it seemed like they kind of grew up real quick. And, uh, man, they're kind of like a badass team that I'm really, uh, really digging now at this point in time. So, yeah, man, great dialogue. You know, you really feel, uh, you really get into all the characters, like, right away with this Teen Titans, in my opinion. They've done a great job, really, kind of, you know, letting them have their own little storylines. You see, you know, various team members and various, uh, you know, various dialogues, you know, really getting, you know, good history uh, between each other. So, yeah, Teen Titans, man, great, great title here. Okay, X-Men Blue. So I have actually preferred X-Men Blue over X-Men Gold, uh, even though I thought I would like X-Men Gold more. Uh, the very last issue of X-Men Gold from last week was great, though, in my opinion. So, so yeah, I don't know which one I like more now at this point in time, just after reading uh, X-Men Gold just last night, to tell you the truth. So, yeah, you know, it's the previous team, but they're different. You know, they're modernized a little bit more, even though they're from the 60s. And, you know, their powers are just a little bit different from the original X-Men that we knew and love. So it took me a little bit of time to kind of get over that. But uh, other than that, man, really digging this. You know, I think Jean, Jean Grey, I did not you know think that she would be a leader. But, uh, you know, I've enjoyed uh, what she's done so far. So, yeah, X-Men Blue. All right, Exo Man of War. Man, this was a, like a surprise to me. I never really thought that I would like Exo. Man, great storyline. Uh, you know, I got completely into, similar to Harbinger, I went all the way back to volume one. And I started reading all the uh, Exo that's been uh, that's been released. <clears throat> this story arc, you know, I love the artwork here. You know, that's, that fantasy feel artwork to it, and great stuff. Great storyline, great artwork to, uh, to complement it. Man, Eric has become one of my favorite uh, superheroes now at this point in time, surprisingly. So yeah, Exo Man of War. All right. I grew up playing Clue all the time. You know, I loved any type of mystery puzzles that you had to kind of solve. And man, I fell in love with Clue the movie. Now, I've probably seen that movie uh, maybe a thousand times. No joke. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see, like, what the new take is, is going to be here. Uh, I was curious to see if they're going to do, like, a, another 60s feel to it or if they're going to modernize it. And I just say... I guess I can't really tell by the car itself, but uh, but yeah, really looking forward to see how they're going to, uh, I guess, update Clue for the new generation and uh, see where it goes. I'm really looking forward to this one. I have high expectations. Okay, Edge of Venomverse. I am not truly a Venom fan. I'll read stuff about, about Venom from time to time, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I picked it up really for number one. But uh, interested in seeing where this goes, um, you know, if this uh, kind of piques my interest, I'll continue on with uh, the rest of the Venom story arcs that are, that are about to really get kicked off here. So yeah, Venomverse number one. Oh, I'm sorry, Edge of Venomverse. Okay, Blood Brothers. So this was, uh, you know, it was on my list, but it was kind of like, you know, on the fence if I was going to pick it up. I wanted to thumb through it first. So as soon as I you know opened it up, I, I dug the artwork. Um, you know, it seemed like the comedy was going to be there for me. On, you know, for this one, uh, the owner of one of the LCS also recommended this one for me. So yeah, looking forward to this one. You know, I love comedies, especially if it has good artwork to go along with it. Blood Brothers. Okay, this is Cable number two. I did not anticipate that I would be picking up uh, this as an ongoing. But that first issue really, you know, really piqued my interest. It really got me. So I went ahead and picked up this number two. Um, you know, I, I have not read Cable or, you know, read the X-Men in, in a long time that had Cable in it in forever. So, you know, I, I guess I kind of forgot, like, how good he was. You know, I remember loving him when he came out, like, in X-Factor and, you know, when he was first introduced in the 90s. But, um... Anyways, uh, just reading through number one, I'm like, oh man, this guy's a complete badass. So yeah, I had to get through uh, number two, see what uh, what was going to happen here. So I may be subscribing to this one, we'll see. But uh, yeah, looking forward to this number two. Okay, Star Wars Dr. Aphra. And I think, even though it didn't say it on here, I think this one finished off Screaming Citadel story arc, I think. Uh, part five, so I don't know, I think this is the, uh, the ending here. I wonder why they didn't say anything on the cover. 
Huh, interesting. Anyways, um, yeah, so this one, uh, I didn't think that I would like it as much as what I did, to tell you the truth. You know, at first, uh, the very first uh, Screaming Citadel number one that came out, uh, you know, it didn't really, didn't really pique my interest too much. But uh, as the crossovers kind of started between uh, Star Wars and Dr. Aphra, storyline picked up, the action started getting pretty good. So, yeah, looking forward to see how this story arc ends. Okay, I am pretty much all into this uh, Weapons of Mutant Destruction. I got into the, uh, the Weapon X. I that stuff was great. So, and I also love uh, Amadeus Cho. So, anything that's Hulk related, I know they're putting him in everything, but man, I love the guy. <laughs> so, I don't care. So, yeah, this has been really good. You know, great, great uh, dialogue. I'm sorry, in the Weapon X uh, title so far. So I know they kind of kicked off everything with that story arc. They kind of carry it through here, but um, yeah, man, really looking forward to see how they uh, how they kind of keep this one going. So yeah, Weapons of Mutant Destruction. Uh, I'm sorry, this was totally awesome. Hulk number twenty, which is part of Weapons of Mutant Destruction. Okay, next up, Nam Wolf, and I guess I completely missed out on number two. I guess it sold out. I didn't even I don't know what I was doing that week, but I totally missed it. So I'm going to try to go hunt down number two because I really did enjoy number one. I thought the storyline was not going to be there for me, but it was. So I think the storyline, I gave it like a four on that number one and uh, four out of five. And the artwork was low on my scale. I think I only gave this like a two or 2.5 out of five. But man, the storyline was there for me. So I'm really going to be on the hunt now for that number two. And uh, I'm not going to wait for that number two to find. I'm going to go ahead and read through this number three. So yeah, Nam Wolf. Okay, Secret Empire number five, and I was able to pick up a variant for this one. I did not pick up a cover A, so I'm going to have to read through this one. I think this one was going for like $10 online that I saw. Anyways, so, you know, Secret Empire, man, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence now with the storyline. You know, I, I enjoyed it at first, but I don't know, man. There's something about this that maybe just because I don't know which way they're going to go with it, but uh, I don't know. This this kind of you know plateaued out a little bit for me, man. It, just, it got just a little bit stale for me. So yeah, I'm going to read through it. So, of course, I'm going to finish off the uh, this entire story arc, but uh, yeah, Secret Empire. Okay, The Dregs. This was one that uh, I picked up, I think, through Comic Boxer. Uh, I passed up on number one. Didn't really you know interest me, but uh, after I got it through Comic Boxer, read through it, yeah, I thought it was great. So I went ahead and uh, picked it up as an ongoing series. So this is pretty good, you know. So you have this uh, the city here, who is you know they're they're kind of uh, they're not hunting, but they're they're collecting the homeless people, and they're actually feeding the homeless people at you know as their protein at the restaurants that they uh, that they have, that they own. And I guess you kind of get into you know who. Who's this guy who actually owns everything? It's like this big corporation type of deal. Who's actually doing all this? It's orchestrating all this, uh, uh, the homeless uh, <laughs> stakes, st you know, so to speak. But yeah, this was one that I did not think I, I would enjoy, but it's been a pretty good storyline so far. So yeah, the drags number four. Okay, next up, Redneck. Man, this one is great. I love the storyline. I just finished, uh, you know, this is by Donnie Cates. I just finished God Country last night. <clears throat> that one did not finish as good as what I thought it would, to tell you the truth. I, you know, I was just a little bit disappointed at the very end of God Country. Nonetheless, it was a great series overall. So I have high expectations for this series as well. It's been good so far. So, you know, just kind of interested in seeing, you know, how how many vampires are actually out there. You know, what's, you know, what has been their uh, challenges throughout all these years. So, yeah, looking forward to digging, digging into this uh, vampire world to see, like, how it all ticks and see what's going to go on here. So, yeah, Redneck. Great, great storyline. You know, something that's totally different that's, uh, that's not out there right now. Okay, last up was a free comic. I thought this was pretty funny. So this is Schick Hydrobot. So the storyline, and you know, I guess great marketing there for uh, for Schick. But I guess he's like a transformer. I, I, I assume he's an Autobot. But uh, yeah, so he actually interacts with the transformers that we know from the uh, from the movie side of things. And uh, man, I thought it was kind of funny, so I picked it up. So yeah, that's going to be it for this week's brand new haul. Great to be back. Guys, thanks for watching. Should you enjoy what you see here, please like and subscribe. We'll talk to you later.